Hi everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to elaborate a little bit more about the things that I like to laminate. Simply because in the other video, it was a junk journal inspiration video about 10 things that you can laminate. In that other video, I've shown you examples and I explained quickly how I've done said things. But since then i had quite a lot of questions about some of these items that i've shown you and i thought today would be perfect time for me to quickly demonstrate some of these things and hopefully answer most of these questions so i'm going to rename the other video as part one and this is going to be now part two where we actually go into more detail i'll start first by switching on my laminating machine okay one of the questions was about laminating machine, whether to use the high temperature setting or low temperature setting. And to be honest, I can't answer that question because my laminating machine is very old, as you can see, and it has only one setting on and off. It doesn't have a low or high temperature setting. The way I went about this was to do this. I would take, for example, a laminating pouch. I have these small ones and I would put a leaf just take that off, and I do a test run. And if I notice that these plastic sheets start to wrinkle a little bit or maybe shrink, that means the temperature is too high. So what you can do is grab a piece of book page or any paper and put it in like this okay that way it's not going to wrinkle as much uh, i've noticed this especially with these bigger sheets that are thinner it's 80 here 125 here so when i first started using them i've noticed a lot of this happening with some of the laminated leaves so i started placing these inside of a larger two sheets of paper and then putting it through and then that basically fixed the problem for me another question was about hot and cold laminating my laminating machine can only do hot laminating and i didn't get a chance to experiment using cold and also with these laminating pouches they do come as matte or gloss I've been using the gloss ones because I couldn't find any matte ones. Right after that first video, I ordered some matte laminating pouches and I'm still waiting. Okay. And I thought, well, that's it. I'll just do the video because it's been two weeks since the first one. And I wanted to do this video immediately after the first one. But yeah, I'm not going to wait. So just so you know, you can get them as gloss or matte. And it's up to you what you prefer. I'm just using what I have. But if you prefer matte look rather than the shiny look, yeah, just get the matte laminating pouches. And also with these markings here, it says 80 or 160 and this 125 or 250. The higher this number, the better result for me anyway. Uh, these ones that are 80 are a little bit thin for me. If I'm using them with leaves, if I'm using them with paper, or fabric they seem to be fine but with leaves i usually have a lot of uh, areas that have nothing you know just two of these and i find that that is a bit too thin okay so hopefully i've answered those questions so let's start first with dry leaves to laminate successfully any sort of plant material like this it has to be dry it has to be completely dehydrated when I first started doing this, I was impatient. I did not want to wait for the leaves to dry. And I picked some leaves and some flowers and I thought, I'll just laminate them straight through and they should be fine. No, they weren't fine. Everything turned into this unrecognizable mess that went moldy and you couldn't even tell where the flower was, where the leaf was. It's just not a good idea. Okay, so these have to be properly dried pressed and once they totally dry without any signs of moisture or water in them then they can be laminated and they'll stay like this for a long time i have some 
that are probably four or five years and they still haven't changed color they look all right okay so let's just make some i'll use these small laminating pouches because it's a bit easier for me and you basically open them up shake off any whatever dust in my case is a cat hair here <laughs> and then you do that and then you can place it in side just slowly until the machine grabs it and you just let it go out on the other side in this case i used a lot of leaves but they were thin okay they were thin and i managed to cover the whole area with leaves and laminate without problems and i did use these thinner ones i would have loved if they were a bit thicker so there it is that one is done so that's how we laminate these leaves and you see in this case it started to kind of twist this edge here because the machine was a bit warmer than in this case or maybe because i used a book page to wrap around so it wasn't so hot okay so there it is it's all about experimenting and seeing what works different machines will work at different temperatures you can't really predict all of these things you sometimes just have to try and see what works for you if your machine has a lower setting i'll probably try with the lower setting first and if it's not enough i would go higher another thing you wanted to know was how to make these laminating pouches to stay open like this and you will need two sheets of paper to create this effect now you can go about it two different ways you can take those papers decide what you want on the outside and what you want on the inside you can even have it just white on the inside i have these okay there's something printed on this side as well and you just line them up as best as you can so they have to be the same and you turn the, the insides facing each other i've rounded the edges here so i'm going to do the same with these i can do both at the same time hopefully yep and you can also ink the edges if that's what you want so you grab the laminating pouch I've got two here. Okay. You grab the laminating pouch open it up they have a lot of static so sometimes they're just a bit funny like that you might struggle to open them up and you place these in the middle they're usually just a little bit bigger than the actual paper to have approximately the same amount of this plastic all the way around okay so it's nice and flat you do that and i have this design on this side and that one on that side that's one way of doing it i have here some tissue paper or deli paper butcher paper it's a thin paper and I'm just going to put this inside because I fear that this is too hot now and it might not give me the best results like that. Okay, so I'm going to put it in and when you place it inside, make sure you put it properly so that it's kind of like that, not on an angle because then you might run into trouble. As it feeds through the machine, edges here might get squashed, okay? And you just let it go through. Okay, that is done. Let's see what it looks like. All right, it's a little bit wrinkled again here. I guess the machine got really too hot, so I sometimes just turn it off and I'll wait a little bit. 
Now, this trick with paper is actually really good, especially if you want to laminate just one little thing, but you don't want to waste the whole um, laminating sheet. So you cut a section. And I've been doing that and getting a lot of these jammed because if this is not cut properly, and if it even moves a little bit, like a millimeter to the side, once it goes through the machine, if it just happens to go like that a little bit, the glue that's here is going to glue onto the wheel, the hot wheel that is inside, and it will start to wrap around it and the machine will be jammed. And probably the new machines are built better so you're able to resolve that issue easier. But with mine, I actually had to pull it apart piece by piece to get to that area to actually remove that plastic. And I managed to put it back together because I was taking photos of everything, how it all looked. <laughs> <laughs> and I had help from my husband. But I'm saying to avoid that happening, if you use sections of the laminating sheets that you cut yourself, do that trick with the paper. Put it inside of the paper. And that way, if it activates, it will glue to the paper, but not to the actual hot spinning wheel inside. Okay, now we want this effect. We want this to open. And some of you thought... But how can this happen if you've laminated everything? Now, with laminating sheets, the outer area is glue-free, basically. But on the inside, you can tell this even by touching it. It feels almost like uh, tape. The small, tiny glue particles, I suspect. And when you heat them up, they they glue to the surface that's inside of them so in this case because we had two sheets of paper it glued to the outer sides okay and here on the edges it glued to itself but in the middle it should stay unglued and we'll just try that now and i have to cut it in half just mark where the half is using this one as a guide just there just cut and that's it and let's see if the experiment works yes it did as you can see they did not glue to one another i said there's two ways of doing this in this case you have one design on one side and one on the other but you can also have the same design on both sides either by printing the same paper like you print this twice or that twice or you can do this you can fold you can fold here one and fold the other You can also round the edges. Okay. Take the laminating sheet and you place half and half. Okay, you take one and you place it here. Halfway, and you take the other one and you place it there. Turn that on, and now you put it through the laminating machine. Okay. Turn it off so it doesn't overheat. And now all you need to do is cut across. Now I might as well use scissors. There it is. That one. And here I have like a millimeter of empty space, so I need to cut it close. One side of the laminating pouch glue itself to the paper on both sides and the middle stayed 
like that. And you know what? These are just really great storage solutions for your ephemera, perhaps. I have this napkin holder and you can have a few of them. One for your tags, one for the envelopes, one for whatever you're making. They're really great like that, like a storage solution. If you make bigger journals, they can even fit inside or send with happy mail. So that's how you make those pouches. In this example here, I haven't used two pieces of fabric or two pieces of paper. I used only one. And then I laminated and folded and then joined together by making holes and then sewing this by hand. Okay, I'm not going to do the sewing now because that takes time, but I'll just show you what I mean. First, I cut myself a piece of fabric that is smaller than my laminating sheet. As you can see, I have to trim this one. It's a bit long here. In this case, I've used lace as well, and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to use this lace. If you decide to use lace, do not use something like this, something that is really thick, okay? That was also one of the questions, how thick you can go. It all depends on your machine, but with thinner papers and thinner fabrics, you'll get better results. If you try to laminate something that is like really thick cardstock, or it has a lot of layers of fabric, you might not get a very good results. You'll have a lot of air pockets and it will become wrinkly. I'll just cut up this little bit. Okay, I need to open this up. It's a lot of static. Shake off any dust particles. Use the lint remover if you have to. Place the fabric in the middle. This fabric is synthetic fabric but it kind of looks like raw silk and has that feel. So it is, it is quite thin. Okay, and do the same on this side. I would put it inside of this paper again. I don't know. It just works much better when it comes to these laminating sheets that are a little bit thinner. Let's have a look. It did a really good job so I'm happy I'm very happy okay and what I did here I folded this in half that. I also trimmed this area here, so I went like that. But do not go all the way to this. I don't know if you can see where the air is trapped. That means there is an area that hasn't been glued to itself because of the thickness of the fabric and lace. And if you were to cut into here, it would split open. So when you cut, Try to avoid that line and cut at least two millimeters away from it, like this. Okay. Just like a fussy cut. Do not cut into that area where the A is trapped.
so now it's easier to actually open it up and then to join these two together you can take them to your sewing machine that's like the quickest way run it through the sewing machine on both sides and you're done with it or you can just use uh, like a punch maybe use a ruler and mark where you want the punches do that and then use just a needle and thread to join those two together i'm not going to do that now because it will take me a while and i want to move on with this video but whatever you prefer if the sewing machine is your thing do it with the sewing machine if you like slow stitch perhaps then do it like this it's up to you now while we are at the subject of laminating fabric i want to show you how to do this this is also done with one laminating sheet and two pieces of fabric but we actually put the fabric all the way we didn't leave any excess on the sides it, it goes all the way and it basically glues itself onto the fabric now in this case i've placed the face of the fabric to be on the plastic and that's the other side and then i was planning to do something like this like a little pouch but if you want to make for example a pouch that is plastic on the inside then you would have to place the fabric the other way around and i'll just show you that way now so you take your laminating sheet open it up and you grab two pieces of fabric okay and i would just put it there it doesn't matter if your fabric is a little bit bigger as long as it can fit here okay and this one is pretty much the same on both sides so i'm just going to place it over okay i'm going to close this okay. so i have quite a lot of fabric showing here and i'm going to trim that now if i don't it's going to cause me problems it just won't fit okay and it's really good if you can iron the fabric before you put it in you'll get better results if it's still wrinkled it might give you uneven results okay turn that on I will put it inside of this paper and as you can see we have the wrong side of the fabric facing the plastic which is opposite to this okay let's put this one inside seems as if it pulled the fabric a little bit can you see that but what i wanted is to have plastic on one side and have just the fabric on this side and as you can see it is glued to the plastic all you need to do now is just to cut this here sometimes you're able to just pull it and it comes off okay so now you have the fabric on one side and you have the plastic on the other and if you want a pouch that is kind of waterproof on the inside you can do it now like that okay in this case something like that you have the fabric a nice feel on the outside and you have it like this on the inside you can now use it to store like inks or your brushes glues something that possibly can leak or make a stain and you don't want it to uh, destroy the fabric and it won't if you have the plastic on the inside okay so that's how you do that now i want to show you this i've done this with one laminating sheet and one ply of napkin then i folded and used the sewing machine i've added this and they're cute little pouches okay that are plastic on outside and on the inside okay you do that by taking a napkin and removing just the top ply cutting it to size and laminating it okay 
and in this case I have something similar to what I've shown you with the fabric and this is good because you have here a nice design on one side and on this side you can actually write you can draw it's still paper it's napkin paper okay so with napkins you can do that and it does look nice you can also cut sections out and use in the journal to create little pockets and something like that okay and in, in here i've laminated the whole napkin with three plies and i ended up with one side that is just white and one like this okay so i am taking the top ply off I'll keep this for another project maybe to make some napkin paper and I'm going to leave this one as is and I'll just show you the difference between those two quickly you'll have to cut this napkin to size approximately okay You can if you wanted to iron this napkin to get rid of the folds but i'm not going to I don't have time now so i'm going to put this napkin inside of this laminating pouch and it has all three plies i didn't remove the top or the bottom it's three ply napkin and I'm placing it Side of this laminating pouch I really should have ironed this but I just don't want to now go and get the iron and wait till it warms up I'll just try to do that okay so that's that one is ready I'll just wait for this to warm up a little bit and for this one that we already took apart, I'll have to cut it a little bit smaller because I want to make something like this with it. All right, I'll place this side close that and let's just put this one through first let's have a look I didn't cut it all the way so we do have a little bit of napkin here sticking which is all right because we want to separate this and here it is okay. pull this apart so we have that one ply with just white paper that's plastic on one side and that white napkin on the inside and i really like what it feels like i would love to draw on this perhaps even with marker or pencils it has a nice texture and then here we have the other two plies or was this a napkin with just two plies let's just see see there, there are two plies or oh, maybe it's all right yeah, i can do that 
nothing. So now I can just again this and again use that in another project to make napkin paper. And now I have plastic on this side and I have just the paper on the inside. And if you put this inside of the journal, you can definitely write on that. You can write on that paper. It's just something that you might like to experiment with. And then here, this one is laminated on both sides. It's looking good. Okay, kind of turned see-through. And now I can just fold it to make this pouch. I could do it like this. Just use the one that I already have. Just fold there. And fold here. Okay. Use your sewing machine to join the sides or do it by hand. I've added some lace here and these snap buttons. Okay, so that's how you do that. Another question I had was when I laminated these dresses and cut around them, how come they did not separate? And I sort of answered that partially with all the other examples I've shown you earlier. Because the laminating sheets have that layer of glue on the inside and it actually glues to the surface but the question is does it get glued to every surface and i can tell you it doesn't in my experiments it worked well with paper with napkins and with thin fabrics and lace it worked with vellum as well it worked with tracing paper i have some tracing paper laminated here for the specimens and let's just see what will happen if I cut across here. Is it going to separate or is it going to stay glued? Okay, I'm cutting it all the way. So nothing holding it. It doesn't seem to want to separate, look. Because it's actually glued to the paper. Okay, it's not just this area around the whole surface is glued to the paper and this is tracing paper and it worked the same way with vellum and then i thought i'll just test this on wax paper because wax paper is a little bit oily here i printed with inkjet printer on 80 gsm paper and then it was waxed i've used household candles hot iron and i have a tutorial on that i will link it down below so let's just make one of these pouches with two papers, but we'll use wax paper instead. Just try and see if it works or not, okay? okay I'm going to put them like this, wrong sides together. Open this pouch. Okay. Just going to place that in the middle. Okay, now let's see what happens. Okay, it's ready. Let's put it through. And while that is feeding through, I have more waxed paper here. Okay those two sheets and I thought I'll do this I will just put them through as well and then I'll cut these tags and hopefully I'll be able to separate these and have tags that are plastic on one side and the other surface should stay good for writing and I'll just try that. I haven't tried. Okay. 
I'm excited to test this. So I need to cut it across. Let's see? Nice. It, it actually glued to the wax paper as well. Okay. It stayed open on the inside, but it, it's glued to the wax paper. So if I wanted to, I can cut out these shapes and they will stay, the plastic will stay glued to them. I like these. <laughs> okay, so now let's try this. I want to try something different here. I will just, I'll turn that off. And now, hopefully it will work. I'll just cut this here. Cut these tags. separated easily and they stayed glued to the plastic okay I'm happy with that yeah as well this plastic on one side and it stayed glued it's not coming off which is great so it works with wax paper too now I want to show you when it didn't work last week I've done that Easter egg video. Okay, now I want to show you one time that it didn't work for me. I've been making these small charms, laminating dried leaves and flowers, then cutting the shapes. And they're quite thin and only a little bit of air gets trapped around. And I wasn't really cutting close to it. I was always really careful here as well. This is just paper. There is a little bit of air trapped, but I would always cut around. But then I tried last week to laminate these. I wanted to turn them into like little charms. And they're cardstock, two layers of cardstock and washi tape across. Okay, the washi tape is a little bit kind of almost like wax paper or a little bit oily. And I'll just try again. Maybe it will work this time. I'll just laminate these and I'll try to cut around and let's see what happens. It didn't work for me the first time I tried it. It actually just fell apart. The, the plastic from the laminating sheet just did not want to glue itself onto the washi tape for whatever reason maybe it's a little bit oily i don't know one side is sticky the other one is not i don't know but it didn't work when i tried it the first time so i'm just going to try again now okay so as you can see a lot of air trapped around that is because these are kind of thick okay but even so even if i cut into this as you've seen with all the other examples, the plastic stayed glued to the surface. And let's see what will happen now. Okay, it didn't, okay. It just fell off. So the laminating sheets will not work on washi tape, okay. It actually did not glue itself at all to washi tape. Okay, so if I wanted this to stay laminated, I would have to stay away from the air bubble and cut really wide around. And I don't know if I like that look. All right, so I'd have to cut it something like this so that there is enough. enough of this that's glued to hold it in place. Okay. Because if I cut it too close, it will just lift off. Okay, just wanted to show you that in case you tried something similar and you say, oh, you told us it's gonna stay glued, but it didn't. Yeah, it didn't for me when I used it on washi tape. Hopefully I shed a little bit more light on 
these things that I've been making with my laminating machine. If I've forgotten something, let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer the best I can. And we've seen what works and we've also seen what doesn't work. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.